From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Open Line. Thank you for joining us on Open Line this evening. I'm Hannah McDonald filling in tonight. We are going to be talking about identity depression and when it occurs. Interestingly, we're going to be talking specifically about retirees. Ever leave a job and feel like you miss it and don't have a purpose in life? It is a common feeling, especially for people who exit the workforce completely. Tonight joining us is Jackie Kavnar, the COO at Mental Health of America Mid-South. Jackie, thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you very much. We are looking forward to diving into this. I do think it's super interesting that it's called identity depression. I hadn't uh, seen it spelled out that way. I think of depression, identity depression, uh, depression though, hadn't thought about that. Can you tell me what exactly it is? I, yes, a, a little bit more about that, Hannah. Uh, we have a board member who is a very active volunteer with us who has started a retirees group specifically for men over 55 and they are not the only ones who can go through this process or have this condition but generally many of us um, wrap up so much of our self-worth and our self-identity into our jobs and who we are out in the community that once we reach that retirement age we have lost all sense of self and all sense of identity. Our phone stops ringing, our email isn't full, we don't have a lot of demands day to day, our calendars have a lot more holes in them, and a lot of us really start to question who we are, what we are, what is our self-worth, um, why, why, why are we here, um, mm. what is our purpose for the day, and that can really start to wear on people over a while and they do start to have those symptoms of depression uh, wanting to stay in bed not wanting to go out uh, maybe not getting dressed maybe uh, letting a little uh, self-care self-hygiene slip a little bit throughout the day and it's also some, something maybe many of us saw through covid as well yeah. we would we didn't have to go to the office or go into a set job every day and we were out of our routines. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you mentioned that there has been a group created to address these feelings. You said it's specifically for men. Women are welcome to be part of it. But can we talk about why yes. men may need this interaction? A lot of that has to do with stigma and acceptance because men may not be quite as willing to admit to an issue sometimes as women are. Um, men sometimes especially have a tendency to kind of suck it up a little bit. Um, you know, just kind of just kind of pick yourself up and keep going with it, keep rolling. And they may not be able to be as comfortable discussing those feelings or those issues or working through what what is happening. So tonight we invite anybody who has been through this, maybe figured out what's worked for them, maybe watched a loved one deal with identity depression after they've left their careers, to call us. The number is 615-737-7587. We are talking once again uh, to Jackie Kavnar, the COO at Mental Health of America Mid-South. So the CDC has actually named depression as the number one mental health problem in older adults. Can we uh, continue to kind of discuss what sort of preparation perhaps people can um, can make as they enter this final phase of, of enjoying life, but maybe having a hard time making that transition? Yes, Hannah, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, we do know that one in five Tennesseans has a mental illness a diagnosable in mental illness at any point. And knowing this, we can certainly prepare for what may be happening. And some of that may be with your friend groups, your support groups, 
your involvement outside of work, your involvement outside of your family, please know that your family is very, very important and should be your core and your foundation. But it's also important to have friends outside of your family who have common interests and common values, core values that you share and people that you feel comfortable going to. Oftentimes when we're talking with the children, because we have uh, programs for kindergarten through 12th graders as well, we often talk about who is your trusted adult. And sometimes as adults, we forget that we also need that trusted adult yeah. and that person that you can go to and feel comfortable with. And, and that may be your physician, you know, as you're going through changes and you're getting that annual physical, talk to your physician about changes that are going on through your life. They may be through work, they may be at home with a spouse or a child, or they may also be changes caring for an elderly parent or an elderly aunt or uncle who depends on you that you have a close relationship with as well. There's all kinds of triggers and situations in life that can put you in a position where you may need to just talk things through and get that extra little piece of support that might be lacking at the moment. And it's okay. Right, it is. And I love that we are talking about retirement because there are a number of people who have gone through retirement successfully. So none of us are alone in that in that stage. We have someone in our life, we can say, how'd you do it? I'm thinking about doing it in a year. Obviously people are looking at me and thinking, she's probably not gonna retire in a year. But I do know that even changing a job can likely bring on some feelings of, of um, detachment because I'm no longer where I was. I've got to start fresh. I'm a little worried. Uh, I got to put my best foot forward because everybody's looking at me and thinking I'm happy. So yeah, just talk to someone. Great advice. Um, I've read a little bit about having a, a, a grief reaction even. So what should family and friends look for or, or when they have a friend who may be transitioning into retirement? Can they look for signs of grief? They can, Hannah. And, and again, that's a great question. Uh, look for anyone who maybe there's changes in eating patterns. Maybe there's changes in attitude, changes in sleep patterns. Uh, maybe if someone had a great interest in, say, March Madness, uh, it would be a timely topic right now. Wow. And for some reason, they're not interested in the games at all. Don't even know who's in the brackets, couldn't even care, can't have a conversation about it. If, if it's something that you know that traditionally that person loves, and for some reason you really see marked mm. change, you know, be the time to say, there's some, is there something going on? Is there something we need to talk about? Um, how are you feeling? Uh, what, what, What's going on with you these days? And again, you know, let that person know it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to ask for help. At some point, we're all going to need it for one reason or another. Is it okay to give suggestions, Jackie? If I see someone who is uh, no longer in their job, can I float them some volunteer opportunities perhaps, or a part-time job I think they might like? Certainly, certainly. I, I think that is, is very okay to do that. Uh, the worst thing they can say is no. And also as that support person, don't get your feelings hurt if they do say no, or if you do receive a little bit of pushback, um, lo love your friend, love your family member, and just know that something is going on. And if all else fails, you suggest know, that they may want to talk to a professional. And you may get some pushback from that as well, um, but that that's certainly okay. Well, tonight on Open Line, we are talking about dealing with identity depression. We're going to take a quick break. Call us in the break if you want to talk on the other side about how you have possibly transitioned into retirement with some hiccups or successfully. I know others out there watching might have it on the horizon. We'll be right back.